Hi, everybody. Russ on the West End Network. There we go. Hope you're all safe and well. Um, oh, I just, let's, just, let's just bring him in. I, put, I did a lovely video for him. I was just bringing him straight in. There he is. There he is. How are we doing, George? Yeah, okay. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me back on. Absolute pleasure, man. P absolute pleasure. Little video. I forgot. Do you know, it was the other day I was putting some stuff together. And um, obviously 153 appearances for West Ham, you know, two goals. But I forgot you you were one of the last people to wear the number six shirt after it was Matty Upson, then it was retired. That's some accolade, wasn't it? I actually didn't know that either. Um, yeah, it's, it's a learning uh, process. There we go. There we go. Some accolade, yeah. Especially the players who, who's, exactly. who's worn in the past. Yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah, God, yeah. Um, and even the number three shirt, you know, and number three shirt with Julian Dix and people like that as well. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a very symbolic shirt as well, the number three shirt. But how, anyway, yeah. how are you? Did you have a nice Christmas and New Year, George? That's the more important thing. Yeah, I've, uh, again, keep myself to myself, laying low. And to be honest, over Christmas, I had a little bit of a cold. So it was pr a pretty quiet Christmas, New Year. Thankfully, it wasn't cold that I had, but. Yeah, it was uh, just pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were just chatting beforehand. Obviously, you're you're on the you've been at Linfield on the cut for for six months. You were saying it's flown by, and obviously the news came out yesterday of, of young Callum Marshall signing for West Ham. Uh, good on yeah. you, say. Yeah, no, like you say, you no know, five or six months now at Linfield, learning my way in the in the coaching front now. But um, it's good experience for me. Um, Yes, like you say, Cal Callum moving across to West Ham. He's a young lad, you know, has hopefully a great career ahead of me. He's you no know, definitely got ability there. And hopefully in the future he scores plenty of goals for the Hammers. Oh yes. Oh yeah. And we're also I also heard us after uh, we're looking at Lee is it Leon Boyd? Is it Leon Boyd at, at, at Linfield as well? Yeah, I think uh, the winger. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he, I think he plays right wing, left wing. Um, I actually watched him on Monday evening for uh, the three reserves. Um, yeah. you no, know, a few people were talking about him, and there was a possibility he may be going across as well. But yeah. I don't know. Oh, we we that's don't. We, far, we, 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 yeah, that's as far as that's as far as that. You, that's you as <laughs> No, no idea. Now the door's shut, boys. He, there's, there's no boys. He doesn't let any leaks out. We don't know. But um, no, it's great that Callum. It's great. It's great if you're saying. It's just before we start, there's a lot of a lot of guys from Northern Ireland have moved across now, haven't they? Re into as you said, the, the lad from side of Sunderland the other day, and there seems to be more and more coming across, which is which is brilliant for for guys like yourselves. You know, trying to as you said, Linfield, biggest team in in Northern Ireland at the moment, mm -hmm. aren't they? Top of the league, having a laugh and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's no, it's 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 definitely nice to see. Um, for years, no Northern Ireland football has always been a little bit behind England, Scotland, but it's good to see now they're they're getting a lot more full time professional teams, mm -hmm. and also their the academies that set up now, so it's given younger lads a, a greater opportunity to improve and get across to England. And mm -hmm. um, like you say, probably over the last year or so, few last few months. A lot, a lot more players are getting the chance to uh, move across. Um, yeah, no, it's true. Just on the other subject, we touched on Linfield top of the league. Yes, uh, things are going well, and we're only halfway through the season. But hopefully, they can, or sorry, hopefully we can stay there till the yeah. end and you know win an early trophy. And are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying sort of the, the coaching side, obviously the backroom side, rather than obviously playing? Obviously, it's a different, different dynamic. How are you coping with that? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, just looking at them clips you had on at the front, uh, the start there. Yeah. Uh, brought back some memories of playing. Um, but no, it's a, it's a good experience. I've only been in it now five, six months. Um, I'm learning, obviously, from the manager, David Healy, the yeah. assistant manager, Ross. It's great to be in and around the lads and you know, being part of the football again. So I'm learning at the minute, but it's a great experience and hopefully it all bodes well for the future. Yeah, no, exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one day come, come back, come home, come home. I mean, everyone else is Kenny Brown's come home, came home today, apparently um, part of the young, at the Academy ahead of the Academy. Now the nine to 14s, obviously you've got former skip, your former skipper, uh, Kevin Nolan's in the backroom staff. And yeah. who knows what's going to happen with old Marky Noble. 
Those yeah, things have been in it. Uh, obviously, I see uh, Kevin on TV quite a bit when, when the matches are on. And, you know, it's great to see he's doing so well now on the coaching front. He was always a great leader as captain. Yeah. Um, and like you say, Nobs, I'm sure it'll not be too long down the line that maybe one day he, he'd be manager himself if he has the aspirations, no, to, to want to go down that line. I'm not too mm. sure what Nobs is. Yeah. Um, what I think actually outside of playing, but no, I, I can't. I could see him being a, a coach or, or a manager. No, he's, yeah. he's certainly got that about him. And I think actually today, I think today is, is is the anniversary of his first ever goal at West Ham. So there we go. I actually watched it as well. My, my friend sent it through to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you said you, you you started the move, didn't you? Against Bright, Brighton in the cup, was Brighton in the cup, yeah, yeah. the FA Cup. Yeah. I think he uh, sort of way mishit him, maybe off his shin or something, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it weren't a clean shot. Yeah, it weren't a clean shot. But <laughs> the old count still, to go in. It don't count, is it? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where it's, uh, yeah, it's, cra- it's incredible to think 15 years we scored his first goal at West Ham and, you know, obviously you played with him, um, you know, to, to the second the second part of West Ham when you came back. Um, and, yeah, he's just, just it, it's going to be a weird time when he's not there. Let's just say yeah, that. Yeah, it's just what you're saying there. Like 14, 15 years ago, it's it's crazy how quickly times times went in, and um, I'm, I'm sure even for Mark now, in terms of he's thinking this is his last year, isn't it? He's already says that yeah. this is his last year playing. Mm. He, he may come to the end of the season and change his mind. <laughs> We we get into the Champions League and you go, oh, maybe yeah. did, I, did I say I retire? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have one I'll more season. More. <laughs> and, and actually, at the moment, it's, it's it's quite interesting, George, to have you on because you know we've obviously you know you were you were you know West Ham left back for many you know many years, many games, and obviously recently we haven't we've been without Aaron Cresswell. And, you know, it's, it's fair to say we've had a bit of a dip. And I think a dip has coincided with him not being there. Um, and obviously, you know, similar types of players, really. Both wear number three, both wore the number three shirt. Um, and obviously, are you keeping in, keep, you sort of keep an eye on West Ham, um, how we're doing this season? Yeah, I've been, yeah. No, I think it's been going really well in Europe. Like you say, they started the, the league season off really well. Yeah. I think... Uh, and only because I support them, it probably still hurting a little bit. Liverpool, no, it was a great win against Liverpool. Yeah. And I think after the Liverpool game, the little dip started. Yeah. You no, know, a few defeats in there, but then they've come back over the last two or three games. And there'll be a couple of wins, so it's they're still sitting sitting in a decent position in, in fifth place. Yeah. And um, just to touch on what you were saying about um, you no, know, Aaron Cresswell, he's he's obviously done terrific since he's been there. Um. Think maybe in terms of the fan and getting forward a little bit. I think he maybe has a little bit more quality in front of the goal and set pieces and what probably I would have had. You know, he's got great great delivery, he's got a great left foot on him and you no, know, I'm sure he still has you know, a few years left with uh, West Ham. Yeah, no, I think I think so. I think so. I think yeah, he's been a I think it's one of those players, you know, it's certain players, a bit like yourself and a few others, where when they're not in the side, something doesn't click and you don't really know what it is. And then you go, actually, it's because George isn't playing or, or Cress isn't playing or it might have been Hayden Mullins or someone like that. There may have been, you know, and I think it's really sort of shown how, how important Cress, Cress is to the side. So anyway, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you and West Ham. That's why people want to listen listen to you. We've got loads of questions. We're going to go through some questions as well. I'm styling yeah. them as we're going through. But we're, 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 we'll, um, we'll actually let's start with some questions. Go on, because some people ask some questions. Uh, does George know we are massive? Yes, silly question. Move on. Um, <laughs> we are massive. We are massive, apparently, West Ham. Are. Um, right, let's talk about the playoffs. <coughs> Obviously, that's obviously the second spell. Uh, obviously, I was I was I was listing some of the stuff that, particularly in in the first season you joined. We'll come actually. We'll come back to Scott's question in a minute because we come. I was looking at I was doing a sort of chronological of your career at West Ham, and that first season mm-hmm. was possibly one of the craziest seasons I think in in my lifetime at West Ham. You know, in in terms of obviously you signed in August of that year. Pards, it was it Pards would have signed you, wouldn't it? Yeah, it Pards, Pards would have signed you. Yeah, yeah. 
So Pars signed you, and obviously for you know we've we've had Clive, young Clive Clark on before. Love Clive, he's a lovely guy. And so six hundred grand, and Clive goes back to goes to Sunderland, and then he Lee, and then he and then we don't start very well. Um, he leaves in December. Curbs comes in. Uh, oh yeah, before that we've got Tevez and Maserano. Um, the Icelandics come in, um, and then there's the Great Escape. That's <laughs> what a first yeah. year to come in to join West Ham. Must yeah, have been crazy. It, yeah, it was a bit crazy. I think. Uh, I think for me, uh, yeah, I think it was around September, or October. I came in. I was still injured at the at the time yeah. when I came in, and um, yeah, Icelandic owners named Tevez, Mascarino arrived. Change of manager. Things were going really, really poorly in the league. Yeah, and then. Uh, we sang, made some signings in the in January, yeah. And even then, it was still, it was still up and still down. Good. Yeah, still good. It wasn't probably till around March or so where we got the last eight nine games of the season, and I think everyone around the club knew we had to had to win the majority of them. But then we ran away to Sheffield United, who obviously were. And around the relegation at the time, and they beat us. I think they beat us quite comfortably as well. It was I think so, three yeah. yeah. And then after that, you're thinking, well, you know, that's it. And then we, <laughs> we leave there and win the next or the last four or five games. It was just, it was crazy. It was mental. It was um, great, great memories come the end. Yeah, of, it, but, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can look back at it and go. Christ, that was amazing, but you know, yeah. or that was a that was a season to behold. But as you said, you know, sort of that particularly that, you know, that that last game, I remember it so well. But the whole season, I mean, I've, I was someone's written a book about it about that season, just because it's not just everyone thinks about that season as that game at Man United, but it wasn't. It was so much. It was such a bizarre season with everyone leaving yeah. and the Icelandics coming in, and oh, just... I, I think we even went to. Uh... No, we went to the Emirates, and I, I'm nearly sure Arsenal were still unbeaten at the time. Now, I don't know how long yeah. they'd been at their new ground, but yeah. I'm sure they were still unbeaten. And on another day, we could have could have conceded easily, I don't know, seven eight or so. Yeah, Robert yeah. Green was outstanding. Was outstanding that day, weren't he? Outstanding. Uh, we went 1-0 up and somehow clung on, so it was maybe just the, the football and goal to you know they were looking over us and... Just one of those things that towards the end of the season everything fell in place and yeah. we actually didn't even finish just one or two points above. No, finished fifteenth, didn't we? Finished fifteenth yeah. from forty-one points. But um, if we hadn't won at Old Trafford, we, we would have been <laughs> we would have been down. It's crazy to in some it's crazy. It. Yeah. it's crazy how these sort of like moments happen and everything just sort of falls into place and it was just one of those bizarre seasons that we'll all look back at with a, a raised smile because we can now because it's happened but mm -hmm. anyway let's go back to scott's question so obviously you you left the, and then came back and obviously came back big sam got you back in um and obviously went on to the promotion at the, at the playoffs uh, amazing day my daughter was due that day and I had a really good ticket. Yeah. So I remember it very well. Um, what were the celebrations like afterwards? See, to be honest, uh, obviously uh, around the stadium, it was crazy on the pitch. As you can see, the. Well, as the you can see, look, look, at, look at that. Look at that crazy person there. Yeah. On the... <laughs> <laughs> Doing yeah. his bit for the for Empower. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, that was great. <laughs> Obviously, the, the fans and that, everyone had an amazing day. Get back in the changing room, everyone celebrating, obviously, when promotion. Uh, I think we went up the stairs into a player's lounge or whatever. No yeah. family there. Players still together and everyone's still on a high. But then we... To be honest, we you know we got the coach from there back to Upton Park, and it was actually pretty low key. There was well, didn't um, did Nobes have to go? Didn't Nobes have his stag do or something afterwards? And he, he like left. Yeah, maybe, maybe the next day or so. And that yeah. See, no, it's it's the end of end of season, and afterwards that's the last game. Afterwards, you no, know, you break away and. Wherever you go, 
back home or you have holidays yeah. planned or whatever. But yeah, no, I would have thought there would have been some sort of party or whatever organized afterwards. There was maybe something low key at Upton Park, but no, there was there was nothing. Yeah, nothing major. It's... Unfortunately, <laughs> when you think back now of you know what you achieve, you get promoted. Yeah. And, you're expecting all these wave celebrations and um, <laughs> there's just nothing. There's just whatever nothing. goes on, though, it's but it was actually you no, know, it was quiet, and we get back to Upton Park and went their own way, and brilliant. Maybe had a few weeks off and prepare for obviously the Premiership the following season. Yeah, and and on, and on that note about the seconds, you know, which, which spell did you prefer? Uh, was it the first spell or the second spell? Um. I don't know. It's it's hard to choose. Uh, both. I, I to be honest, I, I can't really split them. Um, I really enjoy both spells, and mm. I've said it before. I, I should never have left the first time, and it was great to get the opportunity to go back the second time. And you know, we achieved a little bit of success in terms of winning promotion. Yep. And everything was going great. Personally, until I had the injury, then yeah. I sort of way. No, that was me finished. But but both spells were great. I really enjoyed both spells. Yeah. Can't split yeah. them. Nah, it's good. And as I said, they they they're good for different, you know, and obviously different different, yeah, different teammates reasons, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, different yeah. reasons. Yeah, uh, it makes perfect sense. Right, okay, uh, Anton. Anton, uh, you were runner up, hammer of the year. To you were indeed. Um, but did you you did win player play of the year? And that was when you came back, was it? Yeah, that's came when I back? came back. Yeah. yeah. What What's it like? Okay, two different things. What's it like winning something like Hammer of the Year? But I oh, sorry, runner up Hammer of the Year. We were voted for by the fans. That must have been uh, just like a, a really bizarre accolade because you know you're the fans have picked you as one of the one of the top two um, players of the season. Yeah. And again, no, I think I've said this before as well. Great, Greeny won Hammer of the Year that year, but yeah, I'm still claiming that um, I won Hammer of the Year for outfield player, <laughs> if it counts that way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's always great to, to earn the respect of the, the fans. Um, yeah. And again, something I always remember and cherish and up there. And then the Players Player of the Year, it's always nice. Probably a little bit surprised at the Players Player of the Year in terms of, um, I think I, obviously the that was a promotion, promotional yeah. season. Yeah, um, mm. no, everyone put so much effort in that year, and um, for my first season back, uh, I think it was initial, initially a loan period, but it was nice for the players to recognise the. No, put so much effort in that year, and yeah. um, I think for us all, obviously, it was. You no, know, there's never any one player in the team. No, we all we all done terrific that year, and um, thankfully we we you no know, got promoted. But no, it was it, yeah. still still personally, it, it's really good achievements to look back on later on in life in terms of. Um, just remember it, even even telling the kids. Uh, you no, know, I, I was runner up in Hammer of the Year or, or one player's Player of the Year trophies. Not, not. It's always nice to to have personal, yeah, um, or individual awards as well. It makes perfect. Yeah, exactly. It, you have it's it's nice to look back at it and and show there was there was uh you know as well as just talking you know 153 first team appearances you know all that type of stuff you know there was there's an accolade there as well as well as being winning promotion as well. Some people go the whole time of their careers not doing anything like that, but just you know so you've got these extra accolades. So I totally get that. Um, when you were young, George, when you were young, I'm sure you you know you're the same age as me. Um, I'm sure we can remember back then. Uh, which player was the most inspirational to you growing up as a young lad? Um, see, actually growing up, I, I probably never looked up to anyone in term, terms of wanting to be like a certain player. Yeah. I always just thought in my head, I want to work hard. If I get an opportunity, I'll take it with both hands and 
hopefully it, it leads me to where I want to be. But probably later on in life, um, I look back and think because he was the player was from here, George Best, yeah, and how good he was, and you know the status he still lit, he he's remembered mm-hmm. by back here in England, probably all over the world. Actually, you know how good he was. I, I look back now, and I, I actually remember it was uh, my debut for Northern Ireland, and I think he was commentating or he was in the studio at the time. Oh, and wow. I scored and he was up in the players' lounge afterwards, but I was never one of these players after a game to, to win the lounges. Or yeah, I would yeah. just get changed, went home, and I st- it's probably even until today, you know, I look back on it now and think, oh, just wish I had a had a went in and you know, spoke to him, maybe got him the same shirt or something. And, yeah. But the opportunity passed, and I'm, you no. Know, but he was I there. Never, I actually never got the. To meet him or talk to him oh, no really? after that there so probably a little bit regretting that there but yeah the, looking up to Sunday now would have been probably George Best yeah 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 no I totally agree yeah I mean there's <laughs> as someone said all, all the best Northern Ireland players are called George in the chat so there we go there you go so, <laughs> good, good company um uh, a comment from Dennis late to the party good to see the man officially voted our most underrated player <coughs> in the last 20 years on the West Ham Way YouTube channel. Um, and I imagine that's that's to you, not to me. I imagine that's about you, George, not me. But, um, yeah, that's good to say. There we go. It's nice, isn't it? It's nice. That's nice. Um, another one, another one happen- oh, here we go. This isn't a question, but more thank you for everything you did for the mighty hammers and being open honest about your struggles since and inspiration. That's nice, George, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's nice, yeah. Um, yeah, we're all nice here. All nice people. No- Again, uh, I've touched on it. No, it's always not just me. There's millions of people all, all over the world. If mm. they have issues or problems, no, it's yeah. always good to try and seek help or talk to someone to to try and help with it. But uh, yeah, nice message. Thank you very much for that. There you go. There you go. Happy Hammer. It's a lovely lady. Uh, right. Let's 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 talk about some football stuff. What have we got here? Uh, right. Okay. Who was your best best friend? Who was your best mate in the squad? we both times. Uh, f- first time, <laughs> well, probably not as close. Second time around, no. Mark Noble. First time around, we were like yeah. really close. No great friends, and um, I think when I left first time around, we you know was sort of a lost contact a wee bit yeah uh, se- second time around i was no i was always friendly with everyone get on with everyone so second time around probably not so much close with everyone but certainly friendly with everyone in the squad yeah it was it was, it was a good uh, that second time round. You had some you had some funny characters in that second time round, didn't you? With the with the you know think about people in that team. You had Colton Cole and Nolan and uh, and you know even people like Matty Taylor's a good laugh and yeah. you know there's there was some good play. There was some good characters that second time round. Some good characters. Yeah, no, to be honest, but both times uh, I think obviously certainly around football clubs you need you need characters. You need mm. team spirit. No, you need. People that's having a laugh, having a joke. You no, know, both times were great and uh, friendly. Like I say, friendly with everyone. There was a lot of good players, a lot of good people around. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were definitely uh, out of all the managers at West Ham. Obviously, Pards for a little bit, and then Curbs, and and, and then say say, say Sam. Um, did did your your playing? Did, you know, was which which one of the managers did you did your playing star suit more with? You know, was it was it Sam? Was it Curbs? Was it? I mean, Pards. He was he was sort of still injured before he sort of got the boot. Kind of. Um, was there a particular manager you you preferred working under, or was it whoever came? I, I didn't really. I didn't really uh, get a game through injury. I didn't get an opportunity so much under Pards, no. even though he brought me in. Uh, I loved the time with Curbs. It was really enjoyable. Uh, certainly helped me improve further my, my career at that time. Yeah. And that was still one of my big regrets when I left. But 
I was leaving for the wrong reasons and also um, regretfully, you know, I, I sort of I felt the left curve down at the time on the staff. Uh, sure. And then playing on the big Sam, you no, know, it was really enjoyable again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you no. Know, my style of football was you no, know, was simple. Like the attack at times and overlap and got mm. the ball, played it, passed it simple, defended, defended well. No, it was uh, should both managers. I like liked all the managers who played under West Ham. And no, yeah. I couldn't single anyone out. You no, know, I, I had um, good times with all of them, and all of them certainly helped me improve as a player. Yeah, no, exactly. Sounds good. Yeah, you're, you're right. And I think they, they brought different things to the game, didn't they, really? Uh, Kimbo says, do you fancy coming back? We could do with a left back. <laughs> Give you a heart and skill. There we go. There we go. Sign him up. Sign him up. Um, all right, here we go. Let's have a look. Uh, when you were, when you prefer playing under the... Okay, so when you are playing Upton Park, did you prefer playing under the... Uh, at night time, under the lights, Upton Park, which obviously everyone talks about, or... Yeah. On a Saturday, three three p.m. What would you? What? Yeah. What's your? You know, that Upton Park. What was it like playing at Upton Park? Mm. Uh, probably you no. Know, the midweek games uh, under the lights, the cold winter nights, and that there. Yeah. Maybe the atmosphere was a little bit different from a Saturday, but you no, know, you, you couldn't could, couldn't really pick any out. Of it. I suppose you couldn't be the Saturday afternoon when the sun's shining and. Um, yeah. No, you're warm and you're you're enjoying your football net there and you're winning. But I, I both, I, I, I couldn't pick one. You know, I, I enjoy both. You know, you always like I say the atmosphere of midweek games. It's maybe a little bit different, but uh, yeah, I enjoy both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it was one of those things about Upton Park, wasn't it? It's, everyone talks about you know the you know the night games under the lights and the smell of the hot dogs and the burger vans and stuff like that. It's uh, I think people still have still remember those those memories. Yeah. Obviously, was it six years? Six years now? I think six seasons since since we moved. Um, it is. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Time does fly. It's scary, isn't it? Like the last I, time I still haven't been to the. I still, I still haven't been. Oh, to the George, the, come on! The news either. <laughs> uh, I need, I need to get across. I need to, yeah, because my little boy, uh, he's mad into football. I need to bring him across and start watching some games. And then, and then the little you walk around and everyone says hi, George, and then your little boy will be like, oh my god, my daddy is amazing. My daddy's, am-, you know, everyone knows yeah, him. Well, you I, know. would, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think there was too many would be able to pick me out. No, I don't have. Oh, don't be silly! Like don't be silly. Got some lovely comments here, man. Um, right, let's see. Uh, what about okay? Let's talk about jokers. Um, funniest teammate in the Hammers dressing room. Who was the joker of the pack? He only had a short spell at the club, but David Bentley. Really, Bentley? I wow. Yeah, uh, I, I think he was maybe only there for six months or so. Uh, but he was, he's one of the funniest lads I've ever come across. One, one of the nicest, by the way, as well. You know, obviously, he had talent on the pitch, but off the pitch, he was funny and a really great lad, so he was. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. It's, 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 there was a few characters around there. I always remember that that period, um, particularly. Was it uh, Big Sam would always put Henry Lansbury on the bench, wasn't it? Because he could play sub goalkeeper as well. Actually, yeah. he, like Henry was a he's another great lad as well. He actually uh had a spell goalkeeper up at Blackburn, didn't he? Um <laughs> could you Gr- imagine that now he went and goal I think we still won four or five nil that night. We did. Yeah we did yeah. we did we did uh, he did it he did it again. Um right let's have he's a look still, uh, Henry Henry Lansbury still playing now, is he? He's... Yeah, yeah, he still plays a uh, Bristol City, I think he is. Oh, is he Bristol City now? I think it, yeah, because it was at um, Aston Villa, but it wasn't too. It was sure Aston Villa, and I think it's at Bristol City. Yes. He spell, did he have a spell in Nottingham Forest as well? He might be at Forest again now. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. That's the wonder of the internet. Uh, he's at Luton Town at the moment. It says. Oh, is he? Yeah. 
So he is. He's at Luton Town. He was at Nottingham Forest. He was at then he was at Villa. Then he was at Bristol City last year. And he's at Luton Town now. There we go. We've all learned something today. Um, a, you learned, you, a few, you learned a few ex players at Luton as well, isn't there? Is Potty still there? Uh, I don't. Yeah, the uh, yeah, Danny's Danny's there. Freddie's obviously signed. Freddie's at West Ham now, and he played um, in the Europa League. Um, so Freddie Potts is is there is the playing now for us. But yeah, I'm oh, pretty. Yeah, what Danny's about there. George, George oh, where's George? Some oh, I want to say Burton Albion. Oh, come oh. on, I'll be well good if he, if he's at there. George Moncur. Do you know this is like? Where is he at? Hull City. Oh, we've oh, got McCann. Oh, got McCann's the manager. Hull City. I uh, yeah, I think there was another one or two players there as well. Uh, another funny. young lad, Pelle Pelle Ruddock. Pelle Ruddock, Pelle Ruddock, yeah, Pelle Ruddock. I think he's at Luton. Yeah, um, yeah. brilliant, love it. Yeah, yeah still keep <laughs> up to date, man. Again, no good man, what, good yeah, man, good man. Right, um, right. Uh, from Rich, didn't score many, but what was your favourite, George? <laughs> the volley. I don't think I scored any on my left foot. <laughs> yeah, they're the volley, wankers, uh, aren't they? Sometimes are a lot, but it's true. But you, yeah. you scored, yeah. But the, I mean, you know, two goals. You know, you, I mean, to be yeah. honest, there's there's like, there's a hundred people here, and there's thousands of people who did what you wanted to do, or you know, play for West Ham and yeah, score for West Ham. I think it was one in the Championship, but uh, I'm on the Premiership. It's not many, but uh, yeah, definitely the volley gets uh, yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, I love great, great I love strike it. with the right foot. <laughs> great strike for the right foot. Great strike, which is not bad for a predominantly left-footed player as well. Yeah, he's well, very good. Didn't strike with really well with the right foot, but that was one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, who's who's your toughest player you came up against? Your toughest opponent? Lots of talented right wingers in the Premier League in your first spell, particularly. Who did yes. you hate? Who did you hate when, when like, it was, oh, God, not him? No, you, you can always single out like, the, the obvious ones, no Ronaldo. Um, yeah. Aaron Lennon came, came around North Spurs. Probably not, not, probably not so much the first, first spell, I don't think. Maybe, maybe a few more games. the second spell. Yeah. Um, I actually always liked it. I enjoyed playing against Aaron Lennon. Actually, uh, yeah. No, how long ago now? I'm trying to think back to <laughs> right wingers, uh, <laughs> especially in the first spell. Um, yeah, and also the second spell, you've got the championship as well as the Premier League yeah. as well. So that, you know, it's, it's Dennis. Dennis, I mean, Dennis, what you probably what you did say, Aaron Lennon anyway, because he likes Aaron Lennon, so he's quite yeah. happy with that. But uh, yeah. yeah, is yeah, that, pro- is that pro- probably? We'll say Aaron. No, like I say, it's obvious, but you no, know, Ronaldo. I think at the time he was a great player then, but probably never expected to go on and achieve what he has been, becoming one of the best yeah. ever. Um, mm. Yeah, so probably makes it look better now. You no, know, you you'd go home on a Saturday night, think, can't believe how many times he's gone past me or whatever. No disappointed but now I look back and think yeah do you know what it wasn't wasn't too bad it was against one yeah. of the best players ever yeah one of the best players in the world and you didn't yeah he didn't skin you exactly no that's good that's a good point good point um what we got here uh George you and Nobes seem to be very good mates do you are you, are you still are you still are you still in touch with, with Nobes now yeah I think after we had uh, a chat the you know the last yeah. time um we exchanged a few messages and that there. Uh, he left me a f- couple of voicemails and that. No, no haven't spoke to each other on the phone in a long time, but now and again, like I say, you know, we have uh, a few text messages. Um, no, that's, that's yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, good to good, just, you know, be in contact with him. Yeah, you should definitely. Yeah, I mean, we, you, I mean, you know, we should. I think the in the last game, Nobs' last game, isn't it? It's it's against. I want to say Man City at the London Stadium, end of May. Oh, can't wait. You'll get over it. That'd be good. We'll get you over for then. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, that'd be a good one, wouldn't it? That'd be a good one. Um, but yeah, that's no, good, man. It's good to it's good back in touch with you, man. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, what we got here? Um, this season, this season. That's how how far do you think we'll get on this season? 
and we by West Ham, not Liverpool. I know you're a Liverpool fan, but West Ham. How long? How West Ham going to get on this season, man? Yeah, no, we talked about it at the start. They had a great start to the season, and then a little dip in form. But uh, what is it? Two two wins and a draw in the last three, I think. No. Yeah, well, yeah, we, sit, yeah. Sitting fifth. Yeah, um, fifth. I think. No, they're going to spend much money this year. I, they've already got us. Sorry, are they going to spend much money in this window? Um, they've already got a. They've got a, a strong squad, but you know, uh, the more you want to achieve, the stronger the squad needs to be. And I don't know if they, I think they need one or two more additions to it, but uh, I think. No, they're in the round of Champions League places. It's going to be tough now. You've Man City, it's Liverpool, tough. Chelsea, Arsenal's mm. picked up a bit of form. Man United, you, you don't really know what you're going to get with, with them. Um, no, certainly Champions League's within, no, it's a possibility. It's in spitting distance, isn't and it? They it's could, in spitting you know, distance. They could, go, they could go far in the, in the Europa League. They could, they could, um, and obviously, yeah, and that's obviously, I was thinking also when you signed in two thousand and six, that was the that was also the last time we were in the, well, we already we got knocked out in the first round by Palmeiro, but that was the first time yeah. we were last time we were in the the proper UEFA yeah. Cup. Um, so you know, it's it's almost like it's all it was meant to happen today, George. It was yeah. meant to happen today. Um, but yeah, no, I think you're right, man. Uh, it, it's it's tough. It, it's it's tough this season. As you said, transfer. It depends about who we sign. We, you know, we. Need, we have a problem with a left back at the moment position. We need a left back. Um, you know, I think you've... also uh, Antonio, he, when he doesn't play, it's a big miss as well. He gives so much. Yeah. Well, it's goals, assists, holding the ball up, making his runs. No, he, he's a he's a big player up up front. So he, he is. is. Um, he is when he's yeah. not when he's not there, I think the team misses a little bit. They certainly do, man. And as I said, we spoke about Chris. Yeah, we miss Chris, and obviously, it's. Uh, I think he'll hopefully be back. And obviously, at the moment, we got we got Arthur. We got Arthur Masuaku. Yeah, yeah. Bless him. Who's who's trying? <laughs> not not so much a defender. Yeah, but... To be honest, I haven't seen much of Arthur. But uh, is he more of a, a winger than a? Yeah. Back. I think I think by his own admission, he he he's he surprised when people put him at left back because he's not really a left back. He's more of a left wing back, and yeah. you know, I mean, he's yeah. I just think yeah, it's, it's, it's not really good. Bless him. Right, all right. Here we go. Let's get more questions, uh, and then we'll we'll crack on. Um, best. What's what was the best and worst grounds you played at, and why? Apart from obviously Upton Park, that that goes without saying. What what ground did you like playing at? What ground did you hate playing at? I uh, always enjoyed playing at the Emirates. The pitch was like the pitch was always in top condition. There literally yeah. was not a blade of grass out of out of place. Um, great stadium, yeah. Pitch was always great. Tough games, obviously. You no know, Arsenal, very good team. At the time then, though, no, at the minute they're a wee bit up and down, but yeah, probably the Emirates for one of the best grounds, one of the worst grounds, maybe Stamford Bridge. I, I, I don't know why, it was just, well, it was, it was probably more my time at Sunderland, I don't really remember heavy defeats with West Ham. But yeah. we always seem to lose there at West Ham. Uh, but I, I remember going there a few times for Sunderland and getting getting hit for six or seven. <laughs> no, but yeah. it wasn't enjoyable. But um, just on result results basis, though, Stamford Bridge was always a, a yeah, tough place no. to go. Yeah. yeah. So 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 we're staying in London. That's fine. Yeah, staying in London. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Right, a couple more questions. What have we got? Um, God, here we go. It's it's a, okay. Which which teammate was the biggest rebel? Who'd get the most grief for the, for the manager? <laughs> rebel. Who's who's a who's a? Let's see. Let's, let's try and behave nice. Who, who was who was not a good trainer? Who was not a good trainer? We'll say it's not because I don't in case because you might end up getting whoever you say on the channel. So. Um, um. <laughs> Oh, 
yeah, it's yeah, it's England people out now. <laughs> Uh, was there anyone okay let's, let's, we, let's reword that one let's reword that one frank cheers mate frank butcher go back and see pat at the, the pub um <laughs> when, when, it, when it came to training obviously some people like training some people don't like training and that's just the way it is yeah. um which who were who was always a really good trainer let's we'll, we'll flip it It'd be nice who was a good trainer who was a you know i imagine there's some people who put in 100 percent all the time and you know i can imagine something like nobs or, or kevin nolan would be really yeah. good at training um, but you know, was there anyone else who you go who's like proper? I mean, I we interviewed some people before, um, around when obviously people like Frank Lampard Jr. and, and Michael Carrick and people like that were sort of starting off, and they'd say how much of a fantastic trainer Frank Jr. was. You know, he'd yeah. go hours back, and, and even Greeno, I mean, Robert Green, we had Jimmy Walker say what a fantastic trainer he was as well. No, I, I think it's, it's always tough to maybe single someone out for training poorly because all of that, no, you, when you were not really training great, you, no, you get a bit of a, a bit of stick for it, a bit of abuse off the lads. Um, so you'll be, you're always trying to put in that little bit of extra effort, but, yeah. um, maybe just for be, being late and not that he never, he ever trained poorly on a consistent basis and I know he, he was only a young lad at the time, but probably Ravel Morrison. Yeah, I mean for, that, that's someone. I mean that's someone who we've spoken about quite quite a bit. You know, yeah. as you just, said, he, him training. Turning and, up late, no, yeah, or turning up in D, or, or turning up full stop. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, <laughs> to be honest. And again, you know, it was maybe a downfall of his career. And yeah, maybe it's, not being committed enough because he certainly had the talent. And the ability, but was affected in other ways. Um, mm. But yeah, just, just, just for turning up late, no, I'd, I'd yeah, say we'll say that. Reveal. I mean, he. He was one of those ones who you think, you know, what could have been. I think, you know, and and everyone we've spoken about who've who, who played with Ravel and his image yourself, as he, he said, such a skillful player, um, and, and just had all the talent, but you need both don't you you can have all yeah. the skill but you need the application as well and if you haven't got one or the other you're you know some people have got all the application but not the skill but they make up for it because they're trying it's yeah you can't yeah. have the other you can't have skill but no application i, I think as well and probably one of the greatest managers of all times and sir alex ferguson saying mm. how great he was and obviously all the, yeah. the ex man united players and i'm sure you've had more than your first share of west ham players on saying how great he was but Oh yeah, no. It's not just all about having the talent. You need the the hard work and the determination mm. to go with it as well. And unfortunately, he was led astray in other ways off the pitch. That was his downfall. Yeah. And yeah, it's true. It's no, true. it's led and uh, is he still at Derby? Is he at Derby now? Is he still at Derby. Yeah, still at Derby, and he's um, with the Jamaican national team as well. Right, okay. Um, so we, I'm, I'm, I think, I'm sure he's still in his 20s. No, he's, he's still got time to yeah. um, achieve whatever he wants to in his career. But you know, hopefully he can sort, him, sort himself out and put that talent he has on the pitch mm. and show people he can do it consistently. Totally, totally. Who was who was the most skillful? I mean, obviously you played it with some great skillful players. You know, uh, you said Ravel, uh, Joe Cole, um, Tevez. You know, uh, Ricardo Vaste. You know, he was a fantastically skillful yeah. player as well. You know, um, who was who who at training? Who at the training would take the Mickey the most with their skills? <laughs> yeah, no fast hey, like the the show showboat a little bit. Um... But I, I played against him quite a lot from a young age and um, no, had so much respect for him when he joined me as Tom at the time, even though he'd come to the end of his career, Joe Cole. Yeah. Uh, like his ability was, no, it was, it was frightening how good he was on his day mm. f from a young age. And, um, yeah, no, Joe was an exceptional player throughout his career and showed glimpses off it still, even when he came to West Ham, coming towards the end with yeah. his injuries, he was 
he was a top top player top top draw right we'll do a few more questions then we'll let you go man uh, and have you it sounds like you, you your dinner's binging or, or something like your microwave right okay let's oh, see no, what got. it's uh hang it's a dishwasher actually <laughs> joking, I'm joking. dishwasher well the yeah. other half live Ooh la la <laughs> that football money's still going all right right okay um let's see what else we've got um if you were to play in a, ch- in a charity game now and could pick a current premier league goalie to d- to be in between the sticks for you who would you pick Oh, so which Premier League goalkeeper would you pick in your charity game? Good question, Happy Amore. Good question. I think in current form, it'll have to be between Mendy for Chelsea. Yeah. And do you know who actually, I think he's having a great season, but his, his team's not uh, David De Gea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's, he's almost he's back, to, back, back to where yeah. he was for a year yeah. or two. Um, the, um, no, he's getting a little bit of stick in terms of the goals, not even conceded, conceding. But I think this season he's been arguably Man United's best, best player. He's been excellent. But probably Mendy or you'd have to go with um, Man City's keeper. Yeah, Edison, yeah. Yeah, because he, he's got... He's a great shot stopper, but also he's can play on the ground as well. He's nearly like an outfield player as well at times. Well, that's the thing nowadays. They are, aren't they? So as a defender, I mean, the one thing I hate at the moment, George, I'll be honest, is is when is when the, they 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 play it from the back, and and the defenders aren't very good at playing it from the back, but they do it anyway. It really makes me nervous, particularly at West Ham at the moment, because bless Craig Dawson and 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 Diop but they're not they're not Zuma and Ogbonna when it comes to playing I don't I don't like that. It makes, yeah, yeah. It makes me nervous honest, I, I, I just don't <coughs> no get the the centre half down to say the keeper to pass the ball two yards to him and then like building up from there but no it's it's the way football is now uh no, we're talking about keepers playing out there, like Liverpool's keeper Allison. He's one week he's excellent, and then another week he's, I think, at times overplaying. Yeah, and definitely he's been called a few times. No, a fall for goals, but it's just the way of football now. Every team wants the 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 build out from the back and you no know, keep the ball possession football and um. You no, know, we're talking about playing out from the back and making mistakes. I, I think even defenders now, there's not really so much in the game today. It's about if you're a fullback, how many crosses you can put in. And yeah, it's not, it's not about defending, forward. is it? But, it's not but really the defending. defensive side's completely gone out the window now. Mm. Um, and it's not even like a few years ago, you, if, if you're a fullback and you didn't stop a cross, like it was highlighted, no. You should be stopping that cross if it led to a goal, but if, but now it's just it's forgot about and it's are you score is the right back or left back scoring goals? Is he creating goals? And it seems to be more important than the defensive side now. Yeah, and it's 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 strange, isn't it? Because it's, it's almost like they're they're now auxiliary wingers, really, or mm-hmm. and it's just like it's not necessarily. You know, when you're looking at a defender coming in, one of the things we talk about is his his crossing ability, his yes. his you know his assists, rather than necessarily the fact can he defend. That's you know, he's mm-hmm. a defender. That's the thing. Um, yeah, it's a strange one. Right, we we'll do a few more, then we'll let you go, man. Uh, then he said, "Who who had the best hair in the changing room with it when you were there, and why was it Christian Daly?" Oh, bless old Christian! What a lovely man Christian Daly was. What a lovely. He man. was great. Christian was a great lad. Yeah. Silly old, um, silly old Dennis. He thinks he's funny. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> Be- who's the best le- best left back in the Premier League at the moment? Best left back at the minute um, has to be Andy Robertson, doesn't it? Yeah. Without question. I'm not being really bad tonight because I'm a Liverpool fan, but <laughs> stop saying you live. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just winding you up. Say stop. I know, I know. He's he's the best. He's the best left back. I think. The I think yeah, no. I... There's probably so many. You no, know, there, there's there's quite a few fullbacks. You no, know, excelling at the minute. You know, you go through the England squad, and uh, you probably have 
three or four, like Chilwell, Shaw. Yeah. Cresswell should arguably be in the England squad. But again, no, full, full backs are strong, like a really strong position, not just left back, right back. Right uh, back, very, yeah, very strong. Um, but I, I would go Robertson. Yeah. But just because he, he's defensively, he's very good and no high tax, it's, it's great to watch. Yeah, brilliant. All right. We'll have one more question. One more question, then we'll let you go, man. Right. Okay, here we go. The best prank you've ever seen at, in the chain at West Ham. Can you remember any pranks? Any any japes? The best prank. Um we're going back years here. <laughs> it's, it's hard to remember. Uh <laughs> Who okay? Who is the joke? Who are the jokers? Who are the jokers? Rather than the uh, a single prank, who are the jokers in the in the dressing room? Can you remember anyone who were the always the the ones getting all the laughs? Yeah, no, you you would have had a few. No, second time round, you'd have had uh, Nobs, yeah, uh, Nolan, um. What about what about um? Trying to think. Uh, what about what about what about Mr. O'Brien, Joey? No, Joey was Joey no, was quiet. Joey. Yeah, Joey was, was, he, quiet. was he a quiet man? I, I don't yeah. see him as a quiet person. Yeah, anyway, no, he was kept himself to himself. No, he quite a personal person. Joey is. Yeah. Uh, good lad. No, really Top good man. Lad, really nice lad. Lovely um, bloke. Lovely bloke. Yeah, I'm trying to. F- It's too long ago to be honest. Uh, oh, does it? Yeah, I know. It's, 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 we'll do another question. Do another question. Uh, yeah, we'll do. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay, we'll do a night, a poignant one. If you had your time again, would you do anything different, and why? Yeah, that's that's, that's an easy one. That's that's why I've said it because it because it would be a nice it'd be a nice answer. But yeah, yeah, no, just obviously the, the first time around at West Ham, uh, really enjoyed my time there and left for the wrong reasons and if I could go back now it's you no know, something I would never have done but mm. again everything's great in hindsight isn't it yeah uh, but it's yeah nice. certainly in football in terms yeah leaving West Ham the first time I would definitely have thought twice about it yeah definitely but I mean, you're still in you know, 153 first team appearances. You know, in the in the modern day, that's a lot. That is a lot, isn't it, for for one club? Um, and as you said, you know, it's, it's you know, it's a hammer of the year runner up. It's a players' play of the year uh, in the promotional year. We said, as I said, one as you know, obviously just found out. You know, one of the last players to wear the number six shirt at West Ham. That's a an accolade you'll always have as well. Um, still have and... a few of those shirts as well up the stairs. Do you keep them? Keep them. They'll be worth a bit yeah. soon. They'll be worth a bit. Don't worry. You know, <laughs> keep hold of them. Do you, are you one? Are you a person who who did you keep a lot of mem- like shirts and stuff yeah. like that, or were you a? Some people weren't, and they wish they were. Yeah. No, come the end of the eighth season, you probably really always got. I don't know, maybe seven or eight shirts, like home, home on the way from throughout the year, and mm. I've always yeah, just always held on to them. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'd have quite a quite a lot of stars. Brilliant. Because there's some people I talk yeah. to that, and they go, oh, well, "Oh no, I didn't do. It, but I wish I did, and I wish I'd yeah. wish I'd done that, and I wish I'd done that." But yeah, it's good that you got. Because I think it's important, isn't it? Because it's like, although I don't keep like my security badges or anything like that, but it's different with football players. But anyway, George, I'm going to let you go, man, because um, you you know you've you've been on for an hour, an hour, and I really really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, a pleasure yeah. as always, my friend. Yeah, Pleasure thank you, mate, for having me back on, on again. It's been a great chat and a great laugh again. It's Yeah, no worries, buddy. And hopefully we'll get you over for May. Yeah. Let's get you over for yeah. Mark's last game. Yeah, ask uh, Mark to put on some tickets for me and I'll bring the little fellow across. Have a word and let me know if you're over then when I'll, when I'll, when I'll pop into the room and I'll say hello properly. All right then, mate. So I'll, I'll let you go. You'd have to worry. You'd have to worry about le- logging out. I'll, I'll kick you out. So you're okay. So don't worry, man. <laughs> okay. Thanks <laughs> Cheers, a lot. Cheers. Take night. care, man. There you go, mate. Let's kick him out. There we go. What a lovely, lovely. I told you. I told you. He's like, he's one of the sweetest men. He's such a lovely bloke. Such a sweet man. Um, if he stayed, there would have been no Wayne Bridge. Absolute win. Fair enough. Um, 
Cheers, mate. Uh, George Layton, but it's quality, proper fight for West Ham, and my boy used to love you all the best. I pass on these regards to him anyway. I thought it was his, it was his mic, it was his dishwasher. Anyway, uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Very great to hear from. Him. Is it mac and cheese? <laughs> Very good. Uh, you won't, Russ. What won't I? What won't I? What won't I? Uh, I don't know what it was, but anyway, fair enough. Uh, he was certainly lovely. Uh, he is very, very cool. That's what we try and do at the West Ham Network is give you the opportunity to talk to these players. Um, we hopefully will have, we may have one next week as well. Uh, and we may have one and hopefully we've got another one lined up for the week after as well. So we try and do like one a week if we can, but obviously it's depending on the players. Guys, thank you so much for lo- loads of lovely comments. Um, if you're new around here, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a subscribe. We made it a subscriber only chat, so we didn't get no, any trolls or anything going, you know, any, so that's why we made it subscriber only. But um, if you'd like to become a member, please become a member. Some of you may have been members before and you're like, why am I not a member now? It's because in January we put together two, we, we had like five tiers and we stripped them back to two tiers. So if you'd like to become a member please consider becoming a member again if you're in the if you're in the bottom tier in the top tier you before you are already there if that makes sense it makes sense anyway um we'll be back tomorrow with the lunchtime live a lunchtime show um myself or Stel will be on or anton who knows who knows who knows who knows but you know where you can find out is if you hit the bell icon so you may have anytime we put new content on but also i think probably tomorrow i have the david moyes press conference maybe for the fa cup game um that probably be tomorrow as well then saturday night i think we've got the watch the preview show for the fa cup with just you needs if we've all got teams, if it's not cold, apparently, you know, Lee's got some real trouble at the moment with COVID and injuries. And I think we've got a little bit, a little bit of COVID creeping in as well. So um, hopefully he goes ahead and then we'll, we'll have the watch along on Sunday. And then myself and Stel will hopefully be live from the sports club after the game, as always, um, if I can get in. It's bloody, gets bloody busy over there, to be honest. Um, could you uh, da, 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 could you ask George, did you see the game we slapped Liverpool? Yep, yeah, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. I feel bad for his ready meal. Probably went cold, but it kept on dinging, so it's okay. I was going to ask if he wants to donate a shirt for me. There we go. What's your prediction for Sunday? We're going to beat those dirty leads. 3-1, exactly. Um, as I said, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And um, we have a number of people who are already members. I'd like to thank all of them personally at the end of each of my shows. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Come on, you irons. Thanks for joining me. Speak to you later. Bye-bye. It's like a family tree